I think I went in with way higher expectations than the show could have ever realistically delivered. It's not like I was disappointed by the announcements or anything, more so I was disappointed that I didn't feel more excited about the whole thing. I figured with this being the grand return after E3 2020 was cancelled, it would have enhanced the hype of even what would have been the most mundane announcements for me. But that just wasn't the case. For the most part it seems, this was a recalibration year for most companies, as things begin to return to more of the way that they were. Ubisoft kicked things off, and weirdly enough, the fact that the main announcement I was interested in leaked earlier in the day made this so much easier to watch. I've just never been that into what Ubisoft does generally, be it Just Dance, Assassin's Creed, or Far Cry, which surprised me this year with just how stilted the animation looked. But knowing that we would eventually get a glimpse of Mario Plus Rabbids 2 made things much more bearable. The original game surprised a lot of people with just how fun it ended up being, but it's nice to see that they aren't afraid to shake up the gameplay, moving away from the grid-based system of the first game to something that seems much more freeing. There was also the implication that mechanics like action commands might appear, that could bring the game closer to what a Mario tactical strategy game should be. I'm still not much of a Rabbids fan, but I appreciate what appears to be a mellower take on the characters in comparison to Kingdom Battle. 2021 was the year that I learned I can appreciate games that I will never play because they have really detailed cactuses in the background. Microsoft was really able to hit that perfect pace for this kind of event, with a whole lot of game announcements and little fat in between. That being said, the announcements themselves weren't all that compelling to me. I just can't get excited about yet another FPS, and there were a lot of those as always. There were a handful of more interesting and artful looking games as well, but these also sort of highlighted another problem. There just really aren't any games that justify next-gen hardware. Like, every one of the most interesting games shown are unlikely to benefit at all from the Series X. In fact, the only game I remember being specifically touted as next-gen was Stalker, and I don't know, it's just a shooter. At the same time though, I can't wait to watch Digital Foundry's tech analysis of Forza. That game seems to be really impressive visually, even if, again, I'm not convinced that next-gen hardware is all that needed. And the way the game is pushing its graphics seems pretty superfluous. I'm here to kill Chaos. Looks like Chaos has been waiting for us. I want to kill Chaos. You sure Chaos is here? This is the Shrine of Chaos. Chaos. And who are you? We're here to kill Chaos. It's Garlic! No. I... Um, chaos. Hmm? Oh, look, a collection of the first six Final Fantasies. Maybe I'll finally give these a try on Switch. Capcom almost had the worst conference, with awkward editing and pretty much nothing of note announced. Likely made worse by the fact that everything Capcom has been planning was known about far in advance due to a major leak that happened a few months ago. It really makes me wonder why they even bothered having a conference. I can only assume that the ESA was begging every major company to show something, no matter how small, in order to re-establish E3's relevance. I think that might have backfired though in this case. If it wasn't for this conference, I think the entirety of E3 would have felt a lot more depressing in retrospect, but holy shit did Nintendo reveal a lot of games. At five years in, the Switch is shaping up to have the most diverse lineup of first-party software, certainly since the GameCube, but maybe of all Nintendo's consoles. Metroid Dread brings Metroid to the Switch with the first original 2D title since the Game Boy Advance, and feels like something new to the series. It was actually shocking how little the trailer relied on pre-established Metroid stuff. No gratuitous Ridley cameo or anything. Instead showing us a pretty chilling glimpse of the kind of atmosphere Metroid has always strived for, but has never really been able to manage due to hardware limitations. WarioWare remains one of the most unique series in all of video games, and a two-player mode is the exact kind of innovation it needed to justify a brand new game. Mario Party Superstars and Advanced Wars are both bringing more material in Nintendo's back catalog into the modern day, which I think I prefer greatly to straight-up re-releases. And then of course there's Breath of the Wild 2, which, in the few minutes of gameplay we saw, completely blew my expectations out of the water. This shot of Link passing through solid rock on its own was enough to completely win me over. There were other smaller first party and third party announcements as well. Smash got a new fighter from Tekken, and one of the funnier announcement trailers they've done for a character. The Zelda game and watch looks much cooler than last year's Mario handheld. And then there's Monkey Ball Banana Mania, which is something I've been wanting desperately, 
and I hope it's a sign that more legacy Sega series, like Crazy Taxi perhaps, will be making their way on Switch. Overall, Nintendo really turned E3 around at the last minute, but it's hard to say that the comparative high quality of this Direct made watching all the other conferences worth it. Namco also had a press conference. Shoutouts to my Tier 4 patron, Famicom Pony. <laughs>